extend my remarks and address the House for a Without long objection. four minutes. First, uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to call attention to the efforts that have been made by uh, Congresswoman Custer and Congressman Yenta. When Congresswoman Custer approached me on this issue, I was only too happy to join in, and I think that the perseverance that she's offered in early days on this is, uh, I think, a challenge for all of us across New England, because what has happened across New England now is gripping in terms of the attention that this issue has drawn. But I want to call attention specifically to a very important case in which there's an individual who I had a chance to witness his testimony, and at the same time I intend to quote liberally from the Springfield Republican which is the paper of record for Western Massachusetts. I want to call attention tonight to a former Ludlow, Massachusetts police lieutenant, Thomas Foy. Lieutenant Foy has a strong upbringing, supportive parents, a college education, a good marriage, three children, and a long career as a lieutenant in the Ludlow Police Department. The 50-year-old was a longtime head of the Detective Bureau and even served on an FBI task force. He arrested many drug addicts and responded frequently to overdoses. He was at the scene of many drug-related suicides. He warned school children about the dangers of drugs. He was even an official who had been elected to the Ludlow School Committee. That was, however, until he got addicted to OxyContin pills following soldier surgery. Two surgeries and more pain medication prescriptions later, Lieutenant Foy found himself admitting that he was addicted. After trying to quit on his own multiple times and suffering sickening withdrawals, he turned to a doctor for help. The same doctor who had originally prescribed him the OxyContin now prescribed more pills to both wean him off the painkillers and to put an end to his sickness. When none of that worked, Foy admits that he broke the law and began to acquire pills illegally, taking them straight from his police department's own evidence room. When he was arrested in his office at the Ludlow Police Department in 2013, he was charged with tampering with substances, two counts of possession of a Class B substance, cocaine and OxyContin, two counts of larceny of the drugs. Subsequently, he was sentenced to two years in jail. He said that it was not fear, dread, or panic that he felt when the investigation finally came to a head. Rather, he felt relief. He now would be able to get help. He talks about the police officer who stayed with him in the detox facility following his arrest. Someday, quote, I want to be that guy, he said. There needs to be some dignity in drug addiction treatment. Lieutenant Foy was lucky in the sense that he survived his addiction and is telling his story to help others. Those who have not survived, including eight people this weekend in my congressional district in a very small geographic area, died from a lethal string of heroin that was identified as the Hollywood brand. The Opiate Overdose Reduction Act of 215 would exempt from civil liability emergency administration of opiate overdose reversing drugs like Naxalone and by people who prescribe or who are prescribed by them. Senator Markey has offered the same legislation down the hallway in the United States Senate. When an opiate overdose occurs, administration of an opiate reversal drug is necessary to prevent death, but it must occur within a certain window of time before the chance of survival is lost. This is a time for quick action, not deliberations or a potential lawsuit. Every day, 120 people die as a result of drug overdoses fueled by prescription painkillers. Another 6,748 are treated in emergency rooms for the misuse or abuse of illegal drugs. According to the Washington Post, overdosing is now the leading cause of accidental death in America, accounting for more deaths in traffic fatalities or gun homicides or suicides. Fatal overdoses from opiate medications such as oxycontone, hydrocondone, have quadrupled since 1999, accounting for an estimated 16,651 deaths. It's time to bring a face to those affected by addiction and stop the ec epidemic in communities across this country. And I want to close as I started with a note of congratulations uh, to Ms. Custer and to uh, Mr. Genta for calling this attention to what is really happening across New England now. And we need to be mindful of the lives that are being destroyed and the families that are succumbing to this torture over long, long periods of time trying to treat those who are addicted and to make sure they get adequate help.